Welcome to Pinewoods Chapel. My name is Chris Atkinson and I'm the pastor of Pinewoods Chapel and I'm so glad we as a church are so glad that you've connected with us today. Pinewoods Chapel is a Christian community church that's located in Angus. We exist to help people get connected with God and learn the truth of God. If you want to connect with us, you can go on our website and find out what's going on. You can also reach out to us through phone, text, email, anyway. Let us pray, because it's great to take time to pray to God who rules over all creation. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your goodness, for your mercy, for your grace. Today, Lord, I pray that you would encourage our hearts as we look to you, as we take our attention off of this world and on to you. Thank you, God, for your gift of love and your faithfulness to us. And we pray all of this in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Psalm 95, verses 1 to 3. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. Oh, mm -hmm. 
gracious, good and gracious, holy, holy, Lord Almighty, good and gracious King. follow Jesus and live for him are invited to participate in communion with us now. Use bread and crackers to eat and juice or water to drink, whatever you have on hand. 1 Corinthians 11 verses 23 to 26 says, The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Hold the bread, which is a symbol of Jesus' body. Jesus asked us to eat this to remember that he gave his body for us. Pray with me. God, thank you for sending Jesus, who not only lived for us, but died for us. The Son of God, who came in the body of a man, gave himself up so we could live. Thank you that his body was raised back to life. Thank you that because of the grace of Jesus, we have eternal life, and we can live forever in you. Amen. Let's eat this bread together. Hold the cup, which is a symbol of Jesus' blood. Jesus asked us to drink this cup to remember that our sins are washed by the powerful new covenant Jesus made possible between us and God. Let's pray together. God, what an incredible picture this is of your love for us. You allowed your only son to literally be poured out so that we could be in a fully restored relationship with you. Thank you, Jesus, for giving your blood. Amen. Let's drink together. As we have received grace and love through Jesus, may we each be an ambassador of that love to others around us in our homes, schools, our workplaces, and our lives. From time to time, each person throughout their life has moments or even seasons where we don't feel happy. When we have had someone close to us die, even our pets, we feel sad. We get frustrated at times by circumstances beyond our control and we even get angry because of problems that are hard to solve. All of these things are normal everyday life encounters that make life challenging and to be happy all the time would negate our emotions like sadness and valid feelings given our situations like the loss of a loved one. 
God in his wisdom created emotions to tell us something about ourselves, about our situation, and about our world. To live with happiness all the time would say that we could never grieve or feel anger or frustrated, which isn't what God has planned for humanity. God himself does not even place all of that on himself. He grieves. He is angered, and God is frustrated too. At the same time, to live all of life and not feel happiness is not God's plan for humanity either. Our world is sometimes not a happy place, and many people struggle with happiness, trying to find meaning in life. And like all other themes that we've studied through the book of Proverbs, God's word provides wisdom on how to live with happiness. And today we're going to talk about how we can be a source of happiness. Over the last few uh, weeks and months, we've been going through the book of Proverbs, just looking at the wise sayings of the wisdom literature that's in Proverbs. And today we're going to wrap up our time in the book of Proverbs. So how do we be happy? Here's, here's the first thing. If we want to be happy, pass on hope. Over in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 28, it reads, The hope of the righteous brings joy, but the expectation of the wicked will perish. Hope is a future anticipation of something good happening. In order to pass on hope, you must have hope. You can't give something that you don't have yourself. What this verse says is that the hope of the righteous brings joy, meaning the righteous have hope, and that will bring about joy. Hope is found in God. God is actually the dispenser of hope. He is the one that is righteous and therefore can give hope. We can't find hope in any other place. Because God is the righteous one, he is the one who gives hope to those who put their hope in him. You see, when our hope is in Jesus, we have joy, plain and simple. Place your hope somewhere else, and that expectation will perish, come to nothing. Just as the verse says, when we place our hope in Jesus, we have joy because all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. We find that written to us over in the book of Romans. Sometimes it takes time for all things to work together for good. But in the end, it is good for the righteous. Once we have received hope from Jesus, we then become the dispensers of hope in this world. People who have hope also have joy and happiness because the future is always better than the present. And we could use some of that today. That type of hope helps us through hard times. It brings perspective on life, giving us a general sense of happiness, even though we may be sad or angry because of our circumstances. As we share hope, it does make us feel happier because we're helping others through the hard times and the difficult times that others are facing. Let's commit to seek Jesus for hope and then share that hope with others. Here's another practical way to be happy and that's give encouragement. Again, in the book of Proverbs, we find all this wisdom and there's a lot of wisdom there for us today. And it says, in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25, it says, Anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down, but a good word makes him glad. A lot of people have anxiety. Maybe that's you. Maybe you uh, work through anxiety on a daily basis. Anxiety is normal. Every person in the world has some level of anxiety about different things. And the scriptures talk about anxiety in a number of different places. We should feel anxiety at times because anxiety protects us and helps us through situations. On the other hand, anxiety 24-7 is overwhelming. And that kind of anxiety weighs down your heart 
just as the verse says. But it also says the remedy for anxiety is encouragement. This verse says a good word makes the anxious person glad. That is, encouragement helps with anxiety. If you have anxiety in your life, do you have a person who is an encourager in your life? You see, each person needs an encourager. Each person should have one. That's how we overcome anxiety and live in happiness. If you don't have a cheerleader in your life, then there is a strong possibility that you will struggle with anxiety and feelings of happiness. God has given humanity a good word. If you are anxious about your future, Jesus has a good word for you. If you're anxious about life, Jesus has a good word for you. Anxiety does not need to weigh our heart down because God is the ultimate encourager. God himself, in his word, he says, keep going when things are difficult. He says, I have a plan for your future, and it's good. He says, fear not, I've overcome the world. You see, God makes promises to us that give us encouragement. And we need to give encouragement to others as God has given it to us so that we can be happy. But also to give happiness to others. One thing we need to be mindful of is to actually receive the encouragement. Sometimes in our own thinking and in our own way of dealing things, we actually negate what God says. Or sometimes we even negate how others encourage us by even saying, well, they don't really mean that. We need to set our mind on the good news that Jesus gives. That is going to make us be encouraged. And that, in turn, is going to make us happy. Here's another wise saying about happiness. If we want to be happy, then inspire others. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 23 has this wise saying, and it just says this, to make an apt answer is a joy to a man and a word in season, how good it is, exclamation mark. We all need inspiration. Inspiration is the process of being stimulated to do something. It's like drawing in breath. It makes you want to press forward. When anyone gives you an appropriate answer or word at the right time, it's joy. Your heart begins to sing. You feel as if you can overcome anything. That's what happens when you inspire others. It causes us to be joyful, to live with happiness. So who or what inspires you? It would be good if we all said Jesus. That may sound like a Sunday school answer, but it's true. As Christians, we should be inspired by Jesus. The words of Jesus should ring in our ears about the problems we face. Jesus has an appropriate word for you today. It will inspire you. And once inspired, gladness, thankfulness, and happiness will begin to dominate in your life. To be an inspiration to others means that you need to be able to assess what is needed by an individual. Sometimes just our presence with someone is an inspiration. But we must be able to gauge the situation and bring creative wisdom to someone's problems as we inspire them with a word, with an encouragement, as we dispense happiness. So is that the type of person you are? Or are you that negative Nelly? where we create disengagement by throwing cold water on people's bright ideas, or always quick to point out the negative in a situation. You see, those types of comments don't inspire. They actually kill joy. They rob people of happiness. Let's not be joy killers. Let's be a people of inspiration. That's really the wise way to live life. And remember, we're talking about wisdom for everyday life. 
when we point others to Jesus, we help them live with happiness no matter what is in front of them because Jesus is our inspiration. Jesus needs to be our inspiration to get through life. Here's another way to be happy, and that is to share joy. Proverbs 17 verse 22 says this. It says, a joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. When we live with a joyful heart, it changes our physical makeup. A joyful heart is a cheerful heart. It's a happy and merry disposition. Health studies indicate that happiness lowers your risk for cardiovascular disease. It lowers your blood pressure, enables sleep, improves your diet, allows you to maintain a normal body weight through regular exercise and reduce stress. All of these studies show that the Word of God proves true. A joyful heart is good medicine. So if this is true biblically and even scientifically, would it, wouldn't it be a good idea to share joy? Making every effort not to crush the spirit of others, but to be a people who share joy. A great filter for social media does this share joy? Jesus came into the world to share good news, good news in sharing joy that you and I can be saved from the consequences of sin and death, living eternally with God forever. Jesus has made joy accessible to you, to anyone who has faith in Jesus. To be happy is to live enjoying all the benefits and blessings Jesus has given us and sharing those with others. That will cause you to be happy. You know, it's a real challenge in our world today because we are bombarded day after day with negative things. And some of us have to live with negative people. Some of us work in places where it's difficult. But I want to challenge you today to live in happiness by passing on hope. Give encouragement to others, inspire others, and share the joy that God has given you through salvation in Jesus Christ. You see, all of these things have been given by God to his children. We need to go and invade the world with happiness. Because Christians, above all, are the ones that are happy because they actually know what God has done. If you struggle with feelings of sadness or happiness and you don't sometimes know what to do, then reach out to our church. I'd be glad to talk with you. I'd be glad to help you process what God can do for you. And again, it's not me. It's what God can do for you. Let me pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you that we can just gather together and be reminded of the joy, the gladness, the happiness that you give to your children. Lord, I pray today that each of us would want to pass on hope to others, that we would have this desire inside of us to give encouragement, and really, God, that we would want to be like you, because you do inspire us. You do bring joy to our lives. So God, help us be your hands and feet today. May we bring the wisdom of God to the world that we live in. And may there be a transformation of the people around us. So God, we give you praise. We glorify your name and we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus. And we pray all of this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. It's been great to be together today. I hope you've been encouraged as we've been digging into God's Word, as we've been worshiping together, spending time around the table, participating together, remembering the elements. God is in control. He's on the throne. On the screen, there's some questions for you to look at and to reflect on. Maybe talk about them with your family or friends or just meditate on them with yourself. Know that you are loved by God by those of us at Pinewoods. We will see you next week, if not before. God bless.
Just ask him. What's the worst that could happen? Hey, Jeff. I was wondering if you'd like to go to church with us sometime. I just thought... I just thought... Okay, 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 okay. Hey, Jeff. Oh, hey, man, what's going on? Hey, I uh, was wondering if you'd like to join us for church on Sunday. Yeah, I don't see why not. Cool, man.